Okay, hello and welcome to practice tonight. My name is Jill Davey and um, apologies to those who usually drop into this Zoom. There was uh, difficulties with the email invitation tonight and so some of you may be uh, joining us on the recording after the fact or um, for what, however you came to be here, glad you're here. And um, I will be working on that issue and trying to resolve it. So <clears throat> one of the books I'm reading lately, one of, is uh, by Michaela Boehm, B-O-E-H-M, called The Wild Woman's Way. Well, and reconnecting to your body's wisdom. And uh, uh, there's lots in here that's helpful and standing out for me. Um, and uh, the author is recalling the teachings from her her root teacher, her her main teacher that she um, received transmission of lineage from, and uh, there's a line in here that inspired the talk tonight, which um, which I will uh, refer to in a few moments. So you probably may likely have heard of um, something called the 10,000 hour rule. This is cited from uh, Malcolm Gladwell, wrote a book called Outliers, the Story of Success, <laughs> which is not something I've read. <laughs> Success. Uh, but um, I'm sure it's a good book, it's just not my jam. And he um, apparently in that book it makes uh, this statement many times and refers to the development of this uh sense of uh, a, a achievement, um, achieving or expertise in a skill, in any skill, is simply a matter of practice, um, albeit practice in the correct way, and, and that for at least 10,000 hours, so this is something that's been kind of bandied around quite a bit, 10,000 hours as being the minimum number of hours to put into something to uh, really become, develop an expertise in it. And uh, so I was thinking about this, about practice and um, expertise, <laughs> which is a strange concept, but, uh, and, and thinking about like how many hours let's say in a week, do, do we practice? So I'll just say formal practice for now. So um, I was chatting with folks in the Zoom call after. And um, so if you want to pop that into the chat, you're welcome to, but you also don't, don't need to, like an estimate of how many hours a week you would do what we're calling formal practice, where you have an intention and you're like, Set, maybe setting a timer or saying, oh, I've got this amount of time, I'm going to do blank practice right now. So um, let's get some ideas what that might be. 10 to 12 hours a week. Any other entries here? Seven-ish, great. Okay, so, and then um, some of us might be like zero, zero hours. I don't do a formal practice. Um, or it might be like it, kind of, uh, we were talking about another teacher earlier that, that teaches what they call glimpses, very short practices. Uh, so here's another offering of eight to 10 hours or five hours a week. 
Um, and so maybe you're someone that does glimpse practices, like 10 minute practices many times a day. So that might end up add up to, let's say we remember to do a glimpse maybe four to five times a day, you know, times seven days a week. Maybe we don't do so much on the weekends. I don't know. And uh, yeah, so then statistically, uh, 24 hours in a day, seven days a week, that's 168 hours. No, I'm not that good at math. I looked it up beforehand. And, uh, and so then say we sleep maybe eight hours if we're lucky, um, a night. So that means 112 hours in a week that we're awake. And then the question becomes, what's going on for the rest of those hours? So let's say we're, we're at 10 hours a week. Um, so we're still at 102. Let's just round it down to 100 hours a week. What are we practicing? what's being practiced in the rest of that time because we're always practicing something we're always practicing something so what are we practicing like really this is so interesting and important to reflect on in your day or even right now maybe before this call or uh, recording or even right now, what am I practicing? Am I pra is self-doubt being practiced? Am I practicing worry, fear, um, blame, resentment, comparing mind? <laughs> We're popping in our hours. Are we practicing comparing mind? Uh, yeah, so look, start to check that out. Pop in many times through your day. What am I practicing just now? Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, well, maybe that's not what I want it to be practicing. You know, worry or mm, all, all, all these uh, painful heart and mind states. And uh, so then it becomes very important to ask, what is my intention? Why am I practicing? Whenever I teach like a beginner's course of meditation, um, that's the first, that's where we start. Why are you here? <laughs> I try not to say it that way. <laughs> but why did you show up? What are you looking for? Um, what are you hoping to get from the practice? And uh, that's really important to write down if you use a meditation journal or, you know, on your altar or something to be clear what, what, why, why are you practicing? What is the intention? What are we hoping to receive from practice? And So maybe um, some folks could pop into chat. Um, why do you practice? What are you hoping to receive from practice? Why do you practice? Don't think about it too much. Should be pretty quick. Why do you practice? Connection, encouragement, thank you. Connection to, to others, is that correct? Clear seeing into impermanence. Mm, good practice. To clearly see into impermanence. And why is it helpful to see into impermanence? <laughs> And another person is saying, I always offer the intention to progress on the path to enlightenment for the benefit of myself and all beings. Sweet. 
Um, yes, connection to others and presence. Habit. <laughs> <laughs> um, so encouragement to keep inquiring with this why am I practicing and, and if we just keep asking ourselves um, to save all beings from myself <laughs> um, so to uh, If we keep asking the question, why, 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 and keep narrowing it down, what's under that, what's under that, what's under that, might we all come to some similar ground of love and peace or freedom from suffering or yeah, like these these things, connection, like um, clearly seeing into impermanence. When I was asking why, it's like, what? How how's that going to be helpful, right? It's, is it because it frees frees the heart from clinging, the heart mind? It it uh, to be a peaceful resting place for myself and others. Sweet. These are beautiful intentions and yeah, so peaceful resting place that's a, a freeing of heart and mind. Yes, liberation, freedom from clinging, which um, causes suffering. And so when we really reflect on our our why, then then we can look again at what am I practicing most of the day <laughs> oh I want freedom I want connection I want to I my intention is to being a loving refuge just um, with myself and in relation to others and so then look well what's the habit of mind through the day is that what I'm practicing or am I practicing contraction and fear and self-judgment or whatever um, mind states that aren't onward leading to that intention. Um, and so if when you reflect on what's happening in the hundred and we'll say 102 other hours of the day, we rounded it down to 100, the 100, out, 100 other hours of the week, if that's not aligning with your intention, then how do we break the habit? How do we cultivate the new habit, the onward leading habits? We need reminders. We have to build in new ways of remembering intention. So, this can be as simple as post-it notes, <laughs> as um, grounding rocks, as an altar, as um, sangha community, having like a regular time where I'm going to check in and be reminded and I'm going to practice with people. Um, yeah, what are, there may be other reminders folks could pop into the chat if they want to that are helpful to you. How do you remember your intention? Many, 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 many times through the day. So one that I have uh, been loving so much these days is an app called We Croak. It's free. I think great. And it's based on the Bhutanese uh, wisdom understanding that uh, contemplating death five times a day brings happiness. And so five times a day, there's pop-ups. Um, remember, you're going to die. And when you click on it, then you get uh, every time a different wisdom teaching, a different quote, a different reminder so that's another little reminder way. Um, let's see what else we have. 
frequent inquiry, um, how is it now, especially when discomfort is present? Beautiful. So just many times through the day, especially when there's discomfort, asking my, asking ourselves, um, how is it now? So in that inquiry, there's a curiosity, there's a little bit of space. So it just re is reminding me of something that uh, her name was Paige, and I don't know her last name. It could be Kelly, but a uh, lot Kelly's partner, spouse, that was uh, co-teaching uh, part of the retreat last week, shared a thing that I thought was it really landed for me. Um, when a part of us is is um, triggered, so especially when discomfort is present, as it was said in this comment here, and and part of us is really activated and uh, taking over, then um, she said she actually does this <laughs> and puts her hand like right on her face, which we think of the alien movie. Um, so, and to actually feel, oh, this discomfort is really present. Like, this has really got me, you know, like, what is it I'm practicing? Oh, something's really got me. It's like this. And you actually put your hand there. It's like, I cannot see clearly. I can't breathe clearly. I can't think clearly. It's like taking over. And then you just take the, you ask, can you just give me a little bit of space so that I can be with you? And you just move it back a little bit, just a little bit away from the face. So you're not asking it to go away, but can you just um, give me a little bit of space so that I can be with you? And um, that, that just came into remembering um, from this comment of frequent inquiry, how is it now, especially when discomfort is present? So it's, it it's, uh, yeah, that just came up. Wanted to share that. A very helpful little tool, I think. Um, and so the quote I was going to mention the, from this book, The Wild Woman's Way, reconnecting to your body's wisdom, uh, that, Michaela Boehm shares from her teacher um, is that the best practice. So sometimes people may want to know or, or be asking, what's the best practice? What's the best practice to do? And the best practice is the one you actually do. <laughs> so good. The best practice is the one you actually do. So it doesn't matter what's your way in. There's a million ways up the mountain, an infinite number of sides to the crystal. What is the way that lands and resonates for you that you will actually do like more often? <laughs> The formal practice of sitting down and cultivating stillness and mm, a, a familiarization with a, a formal practice is priceless. And there's another hundred hours in a week. What you know, what are we actually doing with most of the hours? What are we actually practicing and becoming experts in? Experts. Um, Thich Nhat Hanh, um, Vietnamese Buddhist monk and dear teacher to many, um, he, uh, of course, had a very deep practice and was often asked this question, um, um, you know, how he, how he kept his meditation practice alive for so long. And it, uh, apparently he said, I wasn't there, but someone else has shared this. He says, so you want to know my secret? He, he, and the asker nodded eagerly. And he says, I do whatever works and I change it when it no longer works. So what, is, what does that mean for it to work? 
that gets back to the intention, the why. Why are you practicing? Because I want to develop calm, clear seeing, wisdom, heartfulness, interconnection, wisdom into impermanence. What what is your what are your whys? And is what you're doing um, moving towards cultivating that? Because if we're forcing ourselves, like, uh, you know, we hear something or read something or are told something, this is the way to practice. I'm supposed to feel the breath right here and do it to an hour in the morning and an hour in the evening. And, you know, you're going to have a migraine and you're going to um, not last very long. That's not sustainable for most people. I don't, I don't know anyone who's been able to sustain that. Um, I did know one person and they are no longer with us. And uh, so, you know, is it working? Is it, is it, or is it, are we just bringing our some distorted values to a practice that's meant to <laughs> liberate us, to free the heart mind? I'm talking way too long, so I'm going to stop. Um, these are just seeds of inquiry to really look into what what we're fueling and what habits we're cultivating what are we practicing and what is our intention and um, be open to waking it up a little bit so that all being said let's do a practice now and um, let's see what comes <clears throat> hmm. <clears throat> So as you're, I'm just going to sneeze one second, I'm going to mute. Okay. So as you're setting up for this part that we call formal practice, mm, See if the posture you're setting up is conducive to the intention. So if the intention is kindness and gentleness with the self, um, is it helpful for you to turn off some lights, lay down, turn away from the computer? If the intention is to cultivate wakefulness and energy, then you might want to be sitting upright or um, eyes gently open. You know, check it, check it out. Is your posture meeting your intention? And then, or yeah, so just check that out. And then we'll all just take some time to rest back and down through the body. So that these cues of resting back and down help you find your spine in your seat, your hands and feet.
And let any unneeded tension drop or slide into that support that is here, back and down. And then seeing if there's anything that needs a little bit of softening. So checking out any areas of habit tension in the face, hands, belly, or anywhere else that is a place of tension for you. Let's see if a little bit of softness or widening is available there. Just giving ourselves the opportunity to receive the support that's here. The support of community. The support of shared intentions. and the support of the ground in present moment. And then opening into the wonderment of what is my why intention? Why do I practice? What do I hope to receive from practice? What am I cultivating? And let's just hang out with this for a few minutes of silence together. And if it's helpful, maybe asking what's underneath that why, what's underneath that. Is there a root? And then that intention might 
formulate into hmm, a short phrase. May my practice, so you could fill that in for yourself. And then what might it be like if that intention led the way? That intention guides you, shows you, inclines the heart-mind to see what's needed. Is there some metta or some loving kindness practice or compassion that might show up as words or just a felt experience you wish to cultivate? You might show you an inclination to cultivate gratitude for any aspect of life. What's the intention showing? What's needed? Or the intention might be guiding us towards the wisdom factors to be really awakening and attending to impermanence. Or what is cultivating freedom from suffering? And so in these next minutes of silence together, see what it's like to have intention guide the practice.
And if awareness has slipped into mm, a mind state, like a habit mind state of doubt or comparing, worrying, blaming, etc., you might just take a moment to check that out and ask it to give us some space so we can be with it and to see is this something I've been practicing a lot of Practicing patience and kindness and trust every time we begin again. And what might it feel like now if that everything you were seeking, peace, freedom, love, is already here?
What does it feel like in the mind, heart, awareness? When your why already is. How much effort is needed? What gets in the way? What's really needed? May our practice cultivate connection to each other and to presence. May our practice be encouraging. May our practice cultivate clear seeing into impermanence. May we progress on the path to enlightenment for the benefit of ourselves and all beings. May I become a rest peaceful resting place for myself and others. May I and all beings know freedom from clinging. May I remember to practice in the other hundred hours of the week what I really wish to cultivate. Thank you for joining us in this uh, YouTube practice and um, I hope 
that um, you find the best practice, which is the one you will actually do.